Hello peeps, today we're going to be talking about how to organize your workspace and this is going to be part one of the how to edit a let's play series. One of the most important things that you can do whenever you're making a let's play or doing any kind of editing is making sure that you maintain a very organized workspace and sometimes it's even necessary to create a templated workspace just so you know when you're revisiting projects you're not constantly you know rehashing and redoing a bunch of the same actions every single time because we're editors it's all about efficiency so one of the things that a lot of youtubers do as well as myself we set up custom projects that are already formatted for everything that we need to do so that whenever it comes time to edit that let's play or put together that how-to video a lot of the assets are already in place and all we really have to do is cut in the new stuff cut in the stuff that we recently shot and then you know go in and add embellishment and effects later that way one it cuts down the workflow two it gives you consistency and three it makes branding yourself so 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 much easier now as you guys can see here i won't be looking at the camera too too much but this is going to be a little bit longer of a walkthrough because I'm going to be going through detail by detail how I cut my let's plays and how I organize my workspace. That's going to be the, you know, the premise for this entire series. So this entire series, the videos might be a little bit longer than they normally are. I like to keep my videos between five and 10 minutes max, but these videos might end up being anywhere from five to 30 minutes, depending on how long I talk about the subject at hand. I probably won't do a whole lot of editing or a whole lot of cutting on these. There might be a couple points where I decide to like speed up and you know I'll, I'll increase the speed of the video if it's something monotonous like I'm going through and cutting dialogue um, for a YouTube video because that's that's really just repeating the same action and it can take you know it's usually about 1.5 to 2 times the length of the actual footage so like for example what we have right here is a Star Wars Let's Play that I've been working on. Um, or not really working on, but I've synced up. That's really all I've done with this one. And it right now is sitting at about seven minutes. So th this would take me about, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes uh, to go through and dialogue cut. Uh, but I'll get to that. Uh, so the first thing that I want to show you guys is uh, what's on the screen right here. This is my main Let's Play sequence. Um, and I will be focusing primarily on Let's Plays for this particular series. Uh, but a lot of these rules you can apply to other things, uh, you, you know, up here I actually have um, all my bins organized, and I'll talk about those in a second. Um, and I've got a couple other templates. Uh, I do gameplay. I do a Frugal Friday segment, which is actually this segment that I'm recording right now. Um, actually, I can pull that up if you guys would like me to. I guess I'm going to do it anyway because you guys don't really, <laughs> you're not really there. But um, as you can see, that one's a lot simpler because most of that is going to be brand new footage. There's really only an intro with a little bit of music. You know my little my little jib and then you know at the end there's the outro jib you know you have your social media slider and then my standard ending everything else between that is gonna be brand new content that's created on you know a video to video basis whereas a let's play a lot of that content you know like background music um you know this outer graphic that i have over here this can this stays pretty consistently my intro and outro i have here and here um, you know, here's, you know, the video, obviously, and then the audio down here. Uh, these are nested sequences, so you can actually, um, once I get up to explaining this, my nests are things that I tend to keep the same, but they're actually, you know, I can go in here and I can change them on a video to video, video basis, so I tend to keep them open because I, I touch them up pretty much every time I do a video, I change something a little bit. Um, but sometimes I don't, so I, I just like to keep them open and right there, especially since they're so small. They're not very large at all, and they only have a few elements each, but it, you know, it cuts down the clutter that's on this main page. Um, do, 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 do. So, if you look here, this is uh, my standard Let's Play, you know, timeline. And this, this series by no means is like, this is the only way to do a Let's Play, and you know, it can't be done any other way. Not at all, no. This is more just, this is how I do it, and here are some hints and tips and tricks for things that you guys can do to make yourselves faster, more efficient, and, you know, more organized, which makes it easier, and it takes out a lot of the hassle and a lot of the headache of making videos and making Let's Plays, and it's really the only way, you know, it, it cuts down on stuff to such a degree that it's the only way I'm able to be in school full-time, work at a part-time job, work at another part-time job, and do YouTube almost full time. I, I upload a video to YouTube six out of seven days a week, and I'm about to start publishing a podcast, which will end up coming out on YouTube every other Sunday. So really, you know, it's almost a seven day a week thing that I'm working on. It's a lot of work. Um, I don't have a lot of personal free time, but I love doing YouTube. So all of my free time goes to this. 
Um, which, which is cool, which is awesome, and I hope that whoever's watching this can actually benefit from it to a certain degree. Anywho, getting back to this, uh, as you can see here, I have the intro and the sound, as I was saying before, and the reason that I have, you know, the, the intro up on, like, layer 4 of video is whenever I go to cut in uh, the little intro snippet for my videos, like, I may go in here and I'll, I'll pull a certain section, you know, like a 5 to 7 second section, um, as like an intro teaser sort of, and I'll stick it in the very beginning. Um, so I usually pull that from the game and face layer, and you can see there are two video layers here. Um, there, there's usually the face cam border that I'll stick in there as well. Um, that's actually in the wrong spot. I think I did some kind of effect and needed that to be above in the last video. Um, you can go here, you can right click on any track, delete track. Um, and then I usually keep the face cam border towards the end because once I've gone through and I've cut the dialogue, I'll pull it all back. But anywho, as you can see, there's two layers of video here, um, some audio, stuff like that. And so I leave two layers open here so whenever I copy and paste that in, it doesn't overwrite anything else. Um, I could just pull it from the game and face uh, elements, but that would also pull the music or any kind of effects that I have in the game and face section. So I, I don't want to do that. Um, but it works, um, and this doesn't really change. I wish there was a way to just lock down segments and move things a little more intuitively, but I don't really need to. The only thing that's ever unchanging is the HD bars and tone that never changes, so I've completely locked that layer. doesn't go anywhere, doesn't do anything. Anywho, so this is how I organize my timeline. This is the, the workspace that I work in uh, for Let's Plays. Uh, the intro, HD bars and tone, which is my backdrop, um, I have a game and face subsequence or nest as you know Premiere and Avid and Final Cut they all kind of use those terms interchangeably they mean one thing in one program mean another thing in another program basically a nest or a subsequence at its root level is just another sequence pretending to be a single clip in another sequence so it, it just makes it more organized and easy whenever you look at that final sequence you're not looking at 500 layers of you know audio visual content which in some projects is completely necessary on feature films i've seen a few feature film timelines where there are just hundreds upon hundreds of layers of things going on and they're all necessary and they're all very efficient but in something like youtube or something of this nature you want to keep it as compact as possible because going over the top is just you know you don't want to do that so um sorry guys i'm long-winded and <laughs> i don't exactly have the best lung capacity which is something i need to improve on i know um so yes this this is the timeline you know root level uh you come down here you have you know the social media slate the end that seems to be what's happening i got an assist my and the audio you can hear bleeding from the game and face because i haven't retimed that yet okay cool so that's there i'm i'm not going to talk about cutting in this video i'll talk about that in the next video where i go in and i'll actually cut all of this content but there's there's your timeline that's how i organize it that's the most efficient way i find you have this nested sequence this nested sequence and this nested sequence um and some backdrop if you want it that's just a stylistic choice that i like i, I like the background of the hd bars and tone that's just a personal thing um so now that you have that um, this is probably the most important element uh, for this vi particular video. So if you look up here in the top left, you can see how I have my bins organized. Um, in Premiere, I, in Final Cut, I think they are actually just referred to as folders. I haven't worked in Final Cut in quite a while. Um, but in Avid and Premiere, these are referred to as bins. They're basically just folders within the program. So if you were to like find the bin inside like Finder or Windows Explorer, it wouldn't actually open this way um, unless you opened it using Premiere, in which case you would get exactly what you see here. So you, you can see I have my sequences, you, you know, I open that and you have Editor Fridays, which is the segment I showed you guys just a moment ago. You have Let's Plays, which is the segment that's open right now. This is this timeline here. Um, alternative audio commentary. Uh, that one's really straightforward. I'll show you guys that one really quick. Um, this is pretty straightforward. I have a time code, I have an, uh, a background, which is just this graphic that I can change if we decide to do a different movie or a different video or you know a different commentary. I'll just change that. The time code never changes. I just leave it in there and I just set my exit point to, you know, once we place it in there, if we're watching a 30 minute show, I'll just come down here and be like, oh, 30 minute show, cool. Plop that in there, hit, you know, my out point, you know, drag these two elements down because they're not gonna interfere with anything else and boom, boom, I'm done. Um, super easy, um, super quick, super efficient. 
So, but I'm gonna close that. That's not what I'm here. And the critical beat down is actually that that's a template that I'm working on right now. Um, that's gonna be for the podcast. The podcast will come out on iTunes and Podomatic uh, the first Sunday, and then the following Sunday it'll come out on YouTube, SoundCloud, and other you know social media platforms. Um, just so we can keep it concurrent and I don't have to be worrying about recording and editing one every single week because that's I'm just not at the point where I can do that just yet. Plus I'm still like working out efficiency things in audio editing. So Okay, so we close that. So we have a sequences folder and that's a good place to keep those big elements, those you know, if you're working on several segments, you can keep everything organized there. Uh, if you come over here I have some sound effects and these are just things that I'll gather over time. I'm sure as I start to build up and grab more and more effects. Um, I really don't use that many sound effects in my videos. Um, I just tend to let the games or whatever's happening be the sound effects. But you know, if I'm doing, you know, an Editor Friday piece like this one, like I might actually go in and add some sound effects whenever I'm like trying to point something out. I may add something for embellishment, you know, little stuff. So I'm sure that'll build and that'll turn into more folders within that folder or bin. I should say bin. I'm using the wrong word. They look like folders, so I'm calling them folders. That's that's bad on my part. I'm a very experienced editor. I'm certified in, in Premiere. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so uh, if we go over here to music, uh, my music folder is a little unorganized at the moment, but that's because I've been adding and like trying out and auditioning a bunch of music. And you know, I, I organize it kind of by mood rather than by genre. Like I, I have smooth jazz. So I know it's jazz, but it's that smooth kind. And you know, if you go over here, I have smooth hip hop, but then I have funky hip hop. Um, I also have a, a folder for copyrighted music. Um, every once in a while I'll do a video that uses copyrighted music, and if you guys are familiar with YouTube's copyright policies, you are allowed to use copyright mu music, you just can't monetize it as long as the person that owns the copyright agrees to monetize it themselves. If they don't, you can get a copyright strike. Um, you have to be careful, you have to understand what music you are and are not allowed to use. Pretty much anything you're allowed to use, but you know, I'm not a legal consultant, don't take this as legal advice, but most music you're okay to use, you just can't monetize it if you don't own the rights to it, or it's not, you know, free or public domain, or you can get attributed music where in your description you leave a link, and you know, hey, this music belongs to so-and-so, it was created by them, you know, I'm using it as a part of the creative, you know, commons attribution, blah blah blah. Anywho, so yeah, this is my music folder, um, there's a few things that I'm auditioning, a few things that I, you know, have background music this is something these are all tracks that are really smooth that i use in the background of my videos just to give them like some pacing and make things feel like they're moving a little bit faster so close out that and close out that so as you can see there are bins within bins um and i'm not sure if there's a limit on premiere i've never gone more than four bins within a bin i think there used to be a limit but as far as i know they've gotten rid of that and you can have a nearly infinite file structure as far as i as i know we go over here to assets. This is a good place for you guys to keep things that you're always going to use, things that are going to be consistent but aren't too various. Like I wouldn't keep like titles that I constantly change inside this bin. I would create a bin just for that. But here, you know, these are things that I use all the time and I can use in between videos. Um, like my face cam, I'm going to use that in this video, even though it's a it's an Editor Friday video, I'm going to be using it in my Let's Play video as well, so it's an asset, it's something that I can use in multiple situations for multiple different cases, so it's something like, you know, it's an asset, that's exactly what it is. So, you know, I have my outro stuff in here, this is my outro post-roll, um, I have my pre-roll uh, SD intro, uh, my background HD bars of tone, face cam, you know, that, that AAC background, and the cool thing about this is I can actually you know, edit the original, or edit in Adobe Photoshop, sorry. If I edit in Adobe Photoshop, you know, I can instantly change that without really leaving Premiere, which is super great for whenever I want to, like, do another, uh, another TV show, or I want to do another movie, or, you know, me and Sam decide we were gonna, we're gonna do this or that, anything. It's, it's awesome, because it allows me to have that really consistent workflow, and, and it's a lot of the reason that I choose to edit in Premiere for YouTube over Avid and Final Cut, and I actually do prefer Avid to pretty much everything. I do prefer it to cutting YouTube, but right now the flexibility and the integration of the Adobe programs within Premiere is the reason that I really lean towards Premiere for YouTube exclusively. Uh, as far as most other online video, you know, anytime I need to cut like a short film or a feature film or pretty much anything that isn't intended for YouTube or Facebook, I'm going to cut that in Avid just because it, it, this, you're, you, can, you can move a lot faster and it's meant more for the industry 
um, especially f like film and narrative film, just because of the workflows and what everyone's used to, it, it's better. Um, but personally, Premiere is better for YouTube, in my opinion. So anyway, we close this. Uh, Frugal Fridays. This is where I'll actually drop. As you guys can see, I, I use these folder these bit, sorry bins. <laughs> I use these bins all the time, so I actually have just plopped them up here because I don't I don't like having like I guess effects you open it's a whole nother window it can cover other stuff, uh, but gameplay it's just gonna switch swap me over here so that I'm not getting things in the way. Um, that's a lot of this everything is personal preference, but it's things that I've done just to increase my workflow and cut down on annoyance really. Um, so gameplay, you know, I open this. These are all the elements of whatever Let's Play I'm currently working on. And this, uh, I recorded four, three or four uh, sessions of Star Wars Battlefront. Star Wars. I need a drink of water if you guys will give me just a second. <laughs> ah, drink water. Stay hydrated. Take vitamins as well. Also, so here, you know, I've you know, edited three or four segments worth of Star Wars Battlefront. And these are my face cam reactions. And then this is the audio that I'm recording inside Adobe Audition. You guys actually can't see it because I'm only recording this, this singular screen. But on my other screen, I have my audition file running and I can see all my waveforms and I can, I can tell if I'm being too loud or too quiet. Everything's great. Um, a lot of my mic and that sort of stuff, you know, that's, that's, you gotta test it, make sure your levels are good. You get, you, you, you find that sweet spot and then you don't touch it and then you leave it alone. <laughs> Um, but that's that's a whole other video. Um, sorry if I keep getting sidetracked. I'm doing this pretty raw. This is the first kind of tutorial-esque thing that I've really done. I've done a couple in the past, but this is the first raw uncut one. So I'm trying to consistently talk and not give you guys too much dead space. Um, so anyway, so that's gameplay. Um, alternative audio commentary. This is you know the next episode of Stranger Things that I haven't spliced together quite yet. That comes out this Saturday, so that'll be plopped in. But that, you know, again, this is super easy once you have the elements in place. Um, the podcast, it's empty. Um, and that's something that I'm not sure how I'm going to do uh, workflow-wise, work with that inside Premiere. Because honestly, it's just going to be me plopping in a mix down from Pro Tools or Audition. And that's really that. Um, I might stick an end graphic at the beginning or end. But really, it's just going to be like that file with like a picture on top of it because it's, uh, it's audio, it's podcast. It's not meant to be a video. And I'm only putting it on YouTube so that people can like open the tab and listen to it. It's just another avenue for people to check things out. And then you come down here and, um, and these are my nests, which again is another one of the uh, bins that I've you know hotkeyed up top. And that's just that in slate. Um, and you can see that down here as well. And I've got it keyed in down here. These are things I use so often that I, you know, I have multiple access points for all of them. So yeah, that's my bin and folder structure, um, sequences, all that good stuff. Uh, I like to keep, you know, my key elements open all the time, intro, editor, social, and a lot of those contain all my assets. Pretty much every asset I use is gonna be contained in one of these three. Um, one more, I guess you can call it nest, or uh, really it's just sequence. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Real sequence project. Oh, I was, I was in the right place. I completely overlooked it. My bad, guys. Also, if you guys right click on pretty much anything, uh, like if I right click on this tab, um, I can reveal sequence and project. It'll take me to where that sequence is. Um, if I right click on, you know, like HD bars and tone, if I unlock it, right click, reveal in project, not in folder. If you reveal in explorer or reveal in folder, it's going to like open a dialog box and you're going to be in Windows. Explorer, you're going to be in, you know, Apple Finder, you're going to be in one of those two. Reveal and Project shows you where it is inside Premiere, and generally that's what you're looking for. Um, unless it's like an external document, like a picture or a video or something that you're trying to mess with. Anyway. So there is all of that. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. um, I don't really mess with any of this stuff. I normally work with a two-screen editing service, so this isn't actually the layout that I normally work with. But it, everything that I use is on screen right now. Um, so really, I just, you know, these two screens are a little bit bigger and they're on the other other side. Of, there's another monitor over here to my right. These two elements are bigger. The timeline is bigger. They're over on the second monitor. And then my folder and bin structure, uh, my effect controls and my effects, these are actually both open. Um, on my, like this is normally where this is. This is over here filling this space. Um, down here, I've got some like audio. 
audio. I have the audio clip mixer and the audio track mixer. Those are both open down here so that I can monitor audio, make sure things aren't blowing out. Um, that's something that I'm still, you know, keying in and like making sure that I can do a, a better job at. Um, I'm learning how to mix, you know, music, sound effects, everything at a very quick rate because I, I've, I'm able to do it. It's just a matter of, you know, can I check out one of these videos every single day? and still maintain a certain level of quality. And so right now audio is where my like, focus is going as well as music and whatnot. Anywho, that's just me talking. Um, da, 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 da. So yeah, that's, that's really it guys. Um, another great thing that you guys can do in terms of organization, and I'll actually probably go into this a little bit later because this is something that YouTubers use all the time. And those are presets, things that you're gonna use in every video or you know multiple times. And there's no reason constantly repeat steps that you don't have to repeat so you'll get people get really used to creating presets uh, for example if I go over here to game and face uh, right now uh, you know the game plays down here and that's you know that's that's Star Wars Battlefront obviously you guys can see I was getting my ass kicked because all you see is red screen um, but you have my face over here so rather than like going to the effects controls and like skip and Whoops, I'm controlling the wrong layer there, guys. And rather than going to the effects controls and resizing this and removing this every single time, I can actually just go over here to effects. I've already like pre-planted where that face cam's gonna go and pop, it's right there. And then my face cam border, which I've also applied the same effect to, already is there. So you guys can see it's already been planted. So it's super quick, super efficient. You know, makes my life a heck of a lot easier. I'm actually gonna undo that because I'm doing a whole video on splicing and cutting dialogue in YouTube and putting together a Let's Play edit um, specifically for dialogue. So, and that's, this is the video I'm using for that, so I'm not gonna touch that right now. Um, you've got different elements over here, like lower thirds, if you've got some kind of object that you, you know, text object that you're like, hmm, I need to create this, but put it down here. That's great for that. Um, different LUTs that I've used quite consistently. Um, Subcard top, right, and center. Uh, back in the day, which is only about a month ago, YouTube had, you know, whenever you would reach the end of your video, um, you would have like one, two, or three videos up here, and then you would you would annotate, and I'll do a segment on annotation as well, but you would, you know, create text boxes around things, or uh, clickable boxes, so that if you're on a computer or a laptop, or some tablets would support it, you could click on them, and they would take you to another video. Um, so you would intentionally design you know, different elements uh, to go there. And that's what these, you know, subcard top right, top left, top center elements are. So like, if I wanted to put this video there so that you click on it and you could go to that video, it was already, you know, similar to the face cam idea. It would already be sized and everything would be good to go. Um, that's another great thing that you guys should do and I encourage because it cuts down on production time so much. But YouTube now has a thing where like, they automatically will put in like your most recent video, a specific video, a specific playlist. Uh, video recommended for that particular view rate and it automatically does it and that's what a lot of this is like you can see There's a lot of big empty open space up here and here, you know It's all in the center and that's because YouTube is filling in these spaces for me um, I actually need to reorganize this and come up with a cleaner way to do this because this is really cramped right now um, But for now, it's clean enough that it works uh, da, 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 da. Favorites are another great thing, and that's the, a similar idea to presets, except these are all uh, pre-rendered things within um, Premiere. Sorry, blanked for a second. These are all pre-rendered things within Premiere. So if you go over here to dip to white, dip to black, cross dissolve, these are all your transition elements. I've got a few audio elements. I don't really go into these folders too, too often, simply because most of the stuff that I use is going to be in here. Um, you know, the, some of these transitions I use for whenever I'm doing like a color editing demo reel. Um, Cinespace, uh, 50, a lot of these things are elements that I'll use consistently within videos just for like effect and dramaticism and dramatism. I don't know what the pronunciation of that word is, but those are just different things that I can add in order to increase my workflow and make me move that much faster. Um, and it lets me crank out six videos a week while doing all that other stuff I was talking about. So anyway, I thank you guys for watching. I hope this was somewhat informative. I know this was a really, really raw video, and if any of you have made it to this point, I super appreciate it, and really hope that you'll continue to watch the series as it progresses forward. Um, I'll try to be more clean cut. I thought I, was, I thought I did a pretty good job. I might have gone on some tangents, 
uh, like I am right now. But anyway, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you could, hit that like button down below. Hit subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.